What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning back into my now semi-weekly vlog. Sorry there hasn't been many videos lately. Today I wanted to make a rear mount radiator specific video. We've basically finished up all the major components of the rear mount, rear mount radiator system in the E92 and I wanted to show you the differences between my E36 rear mount radiator setup and what will be the E92 radiator setup. First let's go over the rear mount radiator setup on my E36. This was basically the cheapest way I could find to do a rear mount radiator setup. And it still actually was quite expensive, at least at least a thousand dollars I'd say. But it uh, works okay, works pretty well. Sometimes it has some issues here and there and uh, we'll get into those. I'll explain all the bad portions of the E36 rear mount radiator setup and then we'll go into how I fix them on the E92 rear mount radiator setup. First things first. There is clearly no radiator in the front of my car. That's the intercooler down there for the turbo. So if you look, this is the stock water pump right here. Stock water pump. This is an AN, a 20 AN fitting pushed in to where the stock one was. Actually this cracked at one point, so we Toyo bonded the whole thing and it's been holding up for like two years. It's 20 AN line in and out of the radiator. You can see the other one down here. They both come up out of here and go down and says, black hole abyss thing here. So this is actually where the downpipe runs and these two lines actually run basically right on top of the downpipe down underneath the car. From there, they go all the way back to, believe it or not, the radiator. So this is what the radiator looks like. You can see the 220 ANs coming out of the, from underneath the car right there. I got a pretty big fan, pretty big shroud. This fan pulls somewhere around 2000 CFMs and it's shrouded and then I got some ductwork that yeah, comes up under here and goes into it down there so the ductwork is all in the rear window there and you can see pretty simple setup that's actually it I have an overflow can so pressurized cap line coming out of the radiator going to an overflow which is down there but other than that pretty simple setup now I did a ton of research before I made this setup and the reason I'm making this video today is actually all of the research I did didn't cover the items that I'm going to explain to you on how I did the E92 rear mount radiator. I had to learn that through um, trial and error and hearing it around the pits and doing stuff like that. So let's get into the first problem. First problem is, is the stock water pump. The stock water pump actually pulls somewhere around 55 gallons per minute at redline at like 6,000 RPM or 6,200 RPM or somewhere around there, which actually flows enough to get the water out of the engine through the radiator back into the engine. Actually, it works really good when it's running, but at idle, it doesn't flow that much. It only flows, I don't know, 10 or 15 or something, less than 55 at idle. And that means when I'm sitting on grid at idle, actually I can watch the temperature start to raise. I rev the engine a little bit, it pushes all that water through and I can watch the temperature go back down. So some of you that have seen me on grid will hear me just rev my car to like three or four grand for like a minute. And you watch the, that's because I'm watching the coolant temperatures go down. That's problem number one. Problem number two is that I use 20 AN line. 20 AN line is about the same size as the factory um, radiator would use, like inch and a half or inch and a quarter, something like that. And it works just fine. It moves tons of water. You have a huge amount of water in the whole system because of that huge line but I could have gone dash 16, which would have saved me a little bit of money. So next time I would have gone dash 16. There are no other water pumps in this system. It is just the factory water pump. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that if I get the water extremely hot, actually the engine will start to cavitate the coolant system. Now this engine has a water pump mod and also steam ports and all that, which I use and I run water through them to try to make less cavitation, but it still cavitates. So if I try to hot lap my car, it will overheat because the coolant system is now producing air. The water is boiling, it's turning to steam, it's coming out the other end and producing air. The way to fix that is to make a system with a swirl tank and an overflow tank. So I just have an overflow tank on this system, but the new E92 system will also have a swirl pot and it will continuously bleed throughout. These are the only two ports on the radiator, in and out, or the other way around, I can't remember, but that's it. So we'll go over this in the new system, but this system does not continuously bleed, which means if I hot lap this car, 
it overheats and many of you have seen it it looks like a jet ski in this car because there's a little hole in the top of my overflow reservoir which shoots water about I don't know six feet up in the air somewhere around here and uh, it's boiling hot water and that is actually causing my car to overheat and that's because it has cavitated and there's water there's air bubbles in the water this is about the simplest rear mount setup you can get without actually just using aluminized exhaust tubing or something instead of AN line. I don't, I don't really like that. There's tons of couplers and stuff that could leak. I just used AN line. In fact, it's less than the factory cooling system. It's just elongated so the radiator's in the back basically. So there's three major issues with my E36's rear mount radiator setup. One, it cavitates. That's the majorest issue. Cavitates, two, it doesn't actually cool enough to stay on throttle. So actually previously when I used to drive this, had the same amount of power and all that, but I wasn't driving with my left foot so much. Then actually the radiator worked pretty well for a long time. But now that I'm driving with my left foot a lot more and I'm staying on throttle a lot more, it just can't cool the engine as fast as it's heating up because the engine's at higher RPM for a longer amount of time. And three, lastly, it doesn't cool enough at idle. It just doesn't push enough water through the system at idle. So we're going to remedy those three things on the E92. All right, guys, so it's a whole new day. And uh, obviously, I've shaved my face. This is the first time in about probably three years I've actually shaved my face. I did it for a Halloween costume. Everybody thinks I'm ridiculous for doing it for a Halloween costume, but hair grows back. I mean, this will grow back. I'll have it back in a couple weeks. So we're back in the garage and I want to talk about the cooling system and upgrades we're doing to the E92 to remedy all the issues we had with the E36's rear mount radiator setup. The E36 actually worked okay enough in competition to use that setup. I've used that setup for about almost two and a half or three years now. And uh, the only time I really saw an issue with it was that toward the end of practice sessions, it would start to get too hot to run so I might have had to sit down sit out one lap or something like that but in competition format there were a couple times where it would cavitate and I actually had to bleed it out midday which is a horrible process you don't want to be bleeding your radiator in the middle of the competition day add stress to you add stress to the car you just don't want to do it and uh, I'm gonna show you what I did on the E92 to remedy those situations and thinking about it you guys haven't seen the E92 in actually quite a while so I'll show you all the extra work I got done while we're standing in the garage right so, check it out. Rear window, complete. Actually, uh, Zeus fasteners hold it down. Here, 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 there, and there. The gas door, in there. Sits flush. Actually, I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. And we got a couple little vents I've put in here. We're not, or I'm not sure how I'm actually gonna set the rear window up, but I didn't wanna do a half window. I don't wanna do a duct in it. So I want to figure out a way to get enough air through this area to just have minimal vents. So we'll see how this works. If I have to take the rear window off and it works better, I'll have to figure something else out. I also did the side windows from uh, Rad Dan and Odie. I stole their idea to put quick release and hinges on them. Rear window opens up. And see I got the nitrous bottle there. Cool shirt will go there. And we get a little more air coming in through there. And actually right now what we're pointed at is the power steering reservoir and the catch can for the differential. You can see the radiator back there too. I also made some progress on the dashboard. These quick releases actually work and stay in the dash now. There's also fenders on it. So we got some OEM M3 fenders on there. Unfortunately we're going to cut most of them out and they're made of plastic. but. Uh, that's what has to go on this car, so you had to get them. So first, let's talk about the issue of the car heating up while drifting. So I can't hot lap because it heats up too fast, right? So if you remember in the last video, we made that crazy fan shroud out of fiberglass. Now I have it in the car. Night Owl and I welded all these brackets up and everything.
get that out. And I put these two SPAL 16 inch fans. I like SPALs because first of all, they're made in Italy, not China. They have smaller motors for the amount of CFMs you get. And they're a little bit quieter because uh, you can't really see them, but they have curved blades. They have curved blades. These both flow 2100 CFMs a piece. And I've got two of them, that's 4200 CFMs. That should be enough to keep the radiator cool. You can actually see we turned the radiator around and blocked off the old ports. So I'll show you the new ports too. So I've got this taped off just so I don't scratch up the window too much taking it on and off a bunch of times while I'm building. It'll look good, better for longer this way. But so the rear window's on quick releases so we can access this stuff better. We can see we got the fuel cell, we got the batteries here, and we'll have the radiator here. And like I said, I'm not trying to put a big duct in here. So we're trying to make it look more OEM-ish without doing a half window or anything. And also I thought it'd be nice to have like, um, it kind of be like a Ferrari F40 where when you look through the window, you can see the engine and stuff in a Ferrari. And this, you'd see the fuel cell and the batteries and the radiator. It'd just be interesting to look at through the window, I think. There's a radiator down there. So we got the fans on one side to help move more air through this. We've also put dash 20 fittings on this. So here and here, these are dash 20 AN fittings. And we have another set of dash six AN fittings. So here and up here somewhere, these are dash six fittings that are also welded on there. I think it's pretty obvious the dash 20s are the in and out to the radiator. But you guys may not know what those dash 6s are for. This is actually to help the cavitation issue. So like I said, in my E36 at very, very high RPM for extended amount of times and when the temperatures get very hot, then I have a cavitation issue where the engine actually produces air bubbles. And that leads to air bubbles in the cooling system and eventually leads to overheating and me having to bleed it halfway through the day. So I went over to Radium and I got their coolant swirl tank, overflow tank, combination tank. Now firstly, this thing is super, super high quality. I mean, it, it's ridiculous how nice this thing is. It's like fully machined. It's just really, really nice piece. And it has a pressurized cap on top. So those dash six lines over here are going to come out of the radiator right from there. When the water comes in, the air bubbles and water will go up, pump out and over to our swirl tank. The coolant will swirl through there, come out the bottom, and go back onto the suction side of the radiator here. While it's swirling around in there, we're going to have some overflow and some air bubbles and stuff go into the overflow tank here. And those will constantly bleed. So the overflow tank doesn't really matter too much. But this swirl tank is what the piece de resistance is. So air bubbles come out of the radiator, go into the swirl tank, go into the overflow tank, and not back into the radiator. That means that the whole system is constantly bleeding, which means when my engine gets hot, no more cavitation issues, because even if it does cavitate, the air bubbles will go into the overflow, and I can drain the overflow when needed. Now the last issue. So the last issue with my E36 is that at idle, it would actually climb in temperature, but I could rev the engine and it would go straight back down. And that's because the water pump didn't push enough water at idle to keep the engine cool at idle, but it did at higher RPM ranges. So we're remedying that in this car with a electric water pump. And that's going to be tougher to show you because it's underneath the car. So I'm going to get under there and show you. All right, guys, I know it may be hard to see, but this right here is the electric water pump. It's got dash 20s in and out. And this thing flows 50 gallons per minute no matter if you're at idle or a red line, it always flows the same. So because that electric water pump flows the same no matter what range the RPM is in, then at idle we'll have enough water flow in and out of the engine to keep it cool at idle without having to rev it up. So that's a small problem, but this fixes it. So the last thing in this car is the line. So the lines will actually come out of the radiator here, go along the bottom here, and maybe you can see it. 
There's actually a hole in my firewall right underneath there. Let's see if we can get you down there. You kind of see the hole in the firewall there? That hole. Comes out right into this tunnel here. And underneath my cool shirt, the tunnel goes down to where the fuel pump kind of uh, uh, cover used to be. And that's where all the lines and everything will go for the power steering and the water and whatever electronics it needs down there. So that is that, we'll make a cover for this. Then, from there, my intention is actually the water lines to come back through this wall right here, go underneath the passenger seat, and into the oil box right here somewhere, and then out into the motor somehow. That setup's all completely legal for FD, as long as you cover the portion that's near the passenger seat with uh, like AN heat wrap or AN sleeving or something. I don't know what it is, I'll have to figure it out. But that's all completely legal for FD and that's my intention on how I'm gonna run this car. One thing we haven't discussed is if we're going to run the stock water pump in addition to the electric water pump. And I think at first, I'm, not, I'm gonna try not to. So you can actually like buy dash 12 fittings to fit where the water pump fits on an LS. Those dash 12s I'll Y into the dash 20s at the front firewall. And uh, that's how I'm gonna try to run it for hopefully ever. But I am a little worried that that one water pump won't be powerful enough with the dash 20 lines because it is a big water line. Uh, I've heard of people using both. I've heard of people using one or the other, but we're gonna try it. Maybe I'll have to get a better pump. I don't know. Hopefully it works because I'd like to reduce weight off the front of the car as much as possible. So that big turbo hanging off the front of my engine way forward of the front strut towers and any accessory that I can take off the front of the engine will only reduce weight. I also have a big heavy iron block. So I really need to be conscious of how much weight I can reduce off the front of the car while building the E92. So that's it for this video. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. I appreciate everybody who has already subscribed. We just hit 401 actually subscribers today. So I really appreciate you guys subscribing and uh, keeping up with my channel, my builds, and overall my racing life. So keep on going. Leave a comment if you have any questions about this setup. I'll be happy to answer them. These, this information here is stuff that even I couldn't learn with all the research I did on the internet. So I'm happy to share it with you guys. And leave a like if you like stuff like this. I'll see you next time.